presentation of our panel here. I'll invite Paul Sabaya, the um, yeah. Director of Cooperative Development from the Alberta Community and Cooperative Association. And uh, Paul Kiley is also filling in for John Rostakis, the Executive Director from British Columbia Cooperative Association, to take us through some information on cooperative survival rates today. So welcome, Paul. I really want to find out actually what happened in the summer of 73 to Saskatchewan that Ian's wife doesn't want to talk about. <laughs> but that could be later like on. <laughs> survival rates of co ops in Alberta and BC. How many people know about survival rate differences? There was a study in Quebec traditionally talked about. What is it? The survival rate of, of co ops after five years compared to traditional. Better. It's better. Yeah. Uh, more than double in most cases after five years at 64 percent. That's I before this study happened. I used it consistently in my work with our own co-ops, and the, the work that was done here with uh, BC and Alberta was to see if that was an anomaly or is it the same case or any different in BC and Alberta. This study actually came out of a group called Balta, which is a BC Alberta Alliance on the Social Economy. Uh, which just got its funding renewed, which is great. So we got another three years going forward. And so this is one of the pieces that came out of that. Um, this is actually, the study was actually done by Richard Stringer, who was the former director of co-op development in Alberta, and Carol Murray, who's the current director of co-op development in BC. So I'm actually speaking on their behalf. I didn't do this research. So if there's any complaints, <laughs> you can talk to them. But, uh, I'll try to do the best I can. Uh, some of the BC, BC project stats, uh, 41 operating co-ops and 150 total, total complete the online survey, okay? So these were co-ops for a 10-year period that they looked at. So 150 co-ops have been incorporated in a 10-year period, basically, to this really step into the plate for us as well, too. So we're very happy to see that happen. Um, and there's some particular issues around developing capital and membership relations for, for housing co-ops. Although what we're seeing a little bit, too, is there's almost a need for a distinction. I think we, there may be a need for a seniors housing co-op federation as compared to a general co-op housing federation, because the needs are getting a bit, you, try, you can't actually get them all uh, aligned in terms of the development needs and ongoing growth processes. So this one didn't come out so well. Uh, well, I, these are just my questions that I put out at the end. Uh, you can't really see the tricks. There, oh, thank you. See, that's a new news present before. That's good. Uh, one thing that didn't come up, the I had these after 83 percent of the responding co-ops. This is the 20, uh, the 18 we talked to plus the eight interviews. 83 percent of them did not have staff. They're volunteer or voluntary organizations. So that's one thing we should put some pause about these questions and comparisons. We compare these co-ops survival rates after five years, more than double the private sector. It may get better comparisons with the nonprofit sector. We're taking a look at that. So keep that with a grain of salt. The ongoing care and financing and capitalization is, is a huge one. How you federate the capitalization around that, and what role can the you know the credit unions are now more traditional in some ways. How can they play in that? Playing some role around that. And as I talked about before already, glad to follow up with Ian because it seems to be a huge role as co-op association in Alberta as developers. What do we do to support the federation of co-ops and particular sectors? So there you go. So I take no responsibility for presenting that data. <laughs> thanks, Paul. And thanks to all of our presenters today. I think we're just a couple of minutes over time. I know some folks are going to be heading in about 12 minutes to the CASP AGM. Um, so I'm wondering if we have any burning questions that we need to address before we part ways. Just to say two quick things. I, I think that comparison to the nonprofit would be hugely important, but also other social enterprises that aren't co-ops, because I think this is pure guess, but I think that there's a lot of survival that happens through volunteer labor, which isn't captured uh, necessarily by that comparison, that one-to-one -one comparison. And also just wanted to ask Ian on federations, because you I missed something and it's a point of clarification which we can solve over the shuffleboard tonight. But when you said there's <laughs> the bias towards the local and the federations, to me the federation is a response to the bias towards the local. I see that from political theory. You, as opposed to a centralized state, you when you have a bias towards the local, you want federation because it takes 
power away from the center. Is that what you were saying, or did I miss? No, it's what, I, what all I was trying to say was that when we think of when, not here in this room, but when people in co-ops think about a co-op, it's the one down the street. They don't recognize the associations. And the local co-ops or credit unions are usually incredibly poor at talking about central organizations and what they do. And there are reasons for it. For their impressive members, there's a whole bunch of like that. Why they don't necessarily stress the value of the tiers, right? That's, that's, that's the point I was trying to So would the federation, the co-op difference in the federation, be the result of the bias towards the no, I, I do think the reply is, I don't want to express this very well, but what I'm, what I'm trying to get at is that in understanding the cost difference, we don't realize how significant these tiers are and what each tier contributes and, 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 and where the possibilities lie within that. And on a, you know, on a very individual level, level, when you are, put it this way, if you are on the board of Credit Union Central of Canada, you're from BC, or we'll call that anyway, Alberta Central, and on a local credit union, where is your loyalty? Right? I mean, that's a you know, common political issue, too. But it's a, it's, it's a problem, or can be a problem. And the instinctive one is saying, my loyalty is with Medicine Hat Credit Union. I would say that's wrong. It's the board of credit union Central. But that's the way it is. Can I just say one comment? That in BC. You, of course, will remember vividly the stages that I had on the chart there. That, I think, is likely connected to the problems of the stabilizing period of, of organizations. You know, we did a lot of work, and it was a BC ICS on the formative stage, and we were trying to get to the next stage, but it didn't happen. To look at what happens in the stabilizing phases. And there, I think there are some endemic problems and other very specific problems, those types of problems. The stabilizing credit union for all generators is not simple. And that's where I think it would be interesting to understand what the prices were. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that, that's really good. Thank you. 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 Thank